It's a struggle these days trying to make ends meet, and I'm trying to find times in which to do these broadcasts. However, there are three things which have happened in the last few days which I definitely want to talk about. And the first one of these uh, was reported in the press today, and that is that the Chagos Islands, which until British annexation had actually been a part of the Mauritius chain of islands. Now, after many years, even after the United Nations and the International Court of Justice said that Britain should give back these islands to their original occupants who they chased off there um, after World War II. Um, despite that, they wasted years and years saying that uh, the International Court of Justice uh, ruling was just advisory. A uh, typical old-fashioned British trick. However, they've now decided, after all this time, uh, and after being on the losing end of just about every international law that there is, to finally give back the ownership of the islands to the people who they chased off there originally. And the Chagos Islands, I should point out to you, occupy a strategic part in the ocean. And both the United States and the United Kingdom have a base there on the island of Diego Garcia. Now, on the face of it, it seems terrific that the Chagos Islanders have got their country back, they've got their islands back. But on the other hand, the United Kingdom and the United States have inserted a condition into this uh, liberation, this giving back of territory which was illegally annexed in the first place. And that simple condition is that the local islanders and inhabitants must accept the presence of a UK-USA base uh, on Diego Garcia, interminably it seems, for the future. Now, okay, there are strategic reasons why a naval base or an aviation base would be necessary in such an area. But on the other hand, to make Diego Garcia effectively off limits to everybody means that they have done the usual. They've partitioned a bit of territory off that they want, uh, in which they're not willing to give back to the original islanders. Now, this has some relevance for us in Scotland because, as we, as you all know, the United Kingdom has its major submarine base in Faz Lane. Uh, 30 miles from where I'm sitting in the car right now, there is a, a nuclear submarine base and a silo. Well, perhaps a silo is the wrong term, but there are underground bunkers in which the UK stores nuclear warheads for their um, continuously at sea uh, nuclear deterrent. Now, whether you agree with the idea of having nuclear weapons or not, you can't alter the fact that, like the Chagos Islanders, even when Scotland becomes independent, it's inevitable that both the United States and the United Kingdom will want to annex that port. They'll want to keep that naval base there because they're close to Europe, Western uh, NATO alliance has its frontline nuclear strike force in the UK and located just there. And it's going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to relocate all of these dangerous nuclear warheads to anywhere else in the UK because nobody else wants them. And we had them forced upon us without any permission granted. However, the Chagos Islanders, thank goodness they've got their islands back. But at the same time, there's still a massive target painted over the island of Diego Garcia, which is their island and part of the same archipelago um, of uh, Mauritius, of that whole area. I think it's Mauritius. For somebody who, if my geography is off, please forgive me. But there are a chain, an archipelago of hundreds of islands, uh, which, of which the United Kingdom and the United States had annexed uh, the Chagos Islands, the chain of islands. Now, so they're going to get their islands back, but at the same time, there's going to be a threat hanging over the area for the foreseeable future. And the same thing would be true in Scotland. I know that if we became independent tomorrow, we would never be allowed to get back what has been taken from us in uh, in Loch Long and at Faz Lane. There's simply no way that the UK would ever agree to it. And remember, the nuclear ballistic missiles of the United Kingdom cannot be launched without the permission of the United States, just in the same way that the UK wasn't able to OK Ukraine using our uh, cruise missiles um, in Russia. They have to get permission from America to give permission from the UK to the Ukrainians. So the whole chain of command in NATO is backed up all the way to the United States. 
and that will remain whether we become independent or not. And that's something that we need to think about. Now, the second piece of news today that I noted was that Sir Keir Starmer has given the green light to a £22 billion investment in carbon capture and storage in Scotland near to where our oil fields are. Now, at first thought and at first glance, you might think, well, that's terrific because it means that they'll be able to remove all the carbon dioxide from the various fossil fuels which are being used to produce electricity, namely gas mainly. Now, on the face of it, yes, it sounds like a good idea. Remove the carbon dioxide from the burnt exhaust from these power stations and then pipe it down redundant pipelines back into spent um, oil wells in the North Sea, back into the sedimentary rocks below the seabed. Sounds like a terrific idea for being able to still use gas, but at the same time making it less environmentally damaging and perhaps even removing the greenhouse gases altogether. However, it's only a stopgap between the end of fossil fuel burning and the beginning of a completely renewable power system. The question is, £22 billion pounds is approximately the size of the black hole which the United Kingdom claims that Scotland has in its finances. So why would they want to get themselves another £22 billion pounds in hock? Remember that the, the £20 billion pound black hole in the Scottish budget is because of English borrowing, which they claim they did on their behalf. So this is going to ramp up basically the debt that the UK has been gradually occur, uh, incurring in its transactions and in its financing of its own operations, its own uh, daily business, from 20 billion, according to them, to 42 billion. And that money is going to be spent by oil companies, it's been given to the private sector to invest in a prov an unproven technology. It hasn't ever been done at scale before. Uh, and the previous Tory government would not give Scottish companies to go ahead to look into it. Now, Starmer says he wants to. Is it good? Is it bad? It depends uh, on a lot of different things. But again, it is another British interest in Scottish oil infrastructure. And it'd be very, un it'd be very difficult to unpick that after independence, because you would then have a carbon capture and storage system which was in private ownership, but which had been funded by ourselves as taxpayers of the UK, allegedly. Um, and Keir Starmer is going to go £22 billion pounds into the red to do it on an unproven technology. Is it a risk? Yes, it's a risk. Is it a risk worth taking? Possibly. Uh, but surely the private companies could have raised the capital to do this themselves. All they required was the OK from the UK government. Why do we need to give them money to do it? When they were already saying they were going to do it, there were investors lined up uh, to go into business in Aberdeen and the environments around Aberdeen building the first actual plant to do this. And yet Starmer's decided to sink money from government, central government, borrowing into this project. It's an odd one. The final thing today I wanted to talk about is Sadiq Khan, uh, the erstwhile mayor of London, and he was singing the praises of the modernisation of the Piccadilly underground system in London. And he claims that this is another example of how spending money in London on London transport infrastructure has huge benefits for the rest of the UK. Anyone know what the benefits to Scotland are of the fancier underground system in London, let me know, because I've yet to find them. Our own underground system has never been expanded. Uh, in Glasgow, we have what people used to call the clockwork orange, basically a train set with two circles of track, one running in one direction and one running in the other. It's a very nice, simple system that works really well, but it's small, it's tiny. And it has never had the billions of pounds that the, the London Underground has been spending on expanding and modernising. They have several different underground lines all across London at various depths under the city. We have one uh, and we've never had any investment in that. Now, if Sadiq Khan were to say, well, we, we now think that uh, the Glasgow Underground system should also be modernised and expanded and we're going to sink billions into that, that would be a benefit. To Scotland. But this, modernising the Piccadilly line in London is anything but. 
And if I know the Piccadilly line, and particularly the Victoria line, having been down here a few times, the rat problem may not have been solved. Certainly in the Victoria line, there are more rats than passengers. So I question this, uh, and I will continue to question it. How does it benefit the rest of the UK? Even anyone uh, in the north of England, or the West Country, or in the Shetland Islands, or Northern Ireland, how do they benefit from a fancier London underground? But that is what we, as UK taxpayers, are helping to fund. And that will continue to happen. They'll continue to spend what bit of our tax money they keep on things like train sets, and we get nothing. So it doesn't benefit us in any way whatsoever, and yet we are forced to spend about 8% of the money that went into this effort. Now, I don't say that London Underground shouldn't be invested in, that's fine, but to claim that it has a beneficial effect on the rest of the UK is just an outright lie. Another Labour outright lie. And so it goes on, but I'm not convinced. Anyway, I think to round things off today, I think we can say congratulations to the Chagos Islanders, but also commiserations for having to have a massive military base in your island archipelago as a leftover of colonial Britain, colonial America, and the growing tensions in the world making it necessary for them even to think about having bases like these. However, Britain's nuclear deterrent has not deterred Russia from invading Ukraine. It's not stopped Vladimir Putin from threatening nuclear strikes and using tactical nuclear weapons. The only people who have been deterred by our deterrent have been us, our military, our leaders, the American leaders. We are the only people being deterred by our own deterrent. We're being deterred by Russia's deterrent instead. It's not working properly, so something needs to be done. And Keir Starmer investing in carbon capture and sequestration sounds like a good idea, but again, whose money is he spending on it when it was meant to be done by the private sector? And finally, the London Underground, which plainly does no good for anyone anywhere else in the UK except London. Anyway, I will see you soon. Thank you for watching all the way through. I would like to uh, just add a comment to the end of this. Please keep making donations to this channel because at the moment uh, I can tell you that Meta, who deal with my Facebook account, and that's where I used to broadcast, paid me when I'm broadcasting there uh, about £30 a quarter. That, that was what I got for doing that uh, on a Facebook live stream. I have no idea if I get anything at all from YouTube for doing this, but I desperately need funds. At the moment, uh, I'm scraping along the bottom with about £30 in the bank, and I really need more help. So please, if you can afford it, and you want to see more of these programs and hear more of these stories, please make a donation. That's it from IndyCar today. Keep the faith. Remember that... Um, Although we're not independent yet, when we are, we will face certain headaches, and one of them is definitely going to be Britain's nuclear deterrent stuck in our, uh, our sea lock. We need to think about that and think about how we deal with it. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.